How are you everyone? In this video I will uh, discuss the different types of inguinal hernia. To understand this video we, you must watch video of inguinal canal introduction and inter inguinal canal boundaries and inguinal triangle. You remember this? We have this uh, inguinal triangle if you remember boundaries by the inferior pigastric artery and lateral border of rectus sheath and medial half of inguinal ligament and this is a deep inguinal ring this yellow structure is fascia transversalis if you remember in this video before this is deep inguinal ring on the medial border of deep inguinal ring we have this inferior pigastric artery arching fibers of internal and transversus abdominis internal oblique and transversus forming the conjoint tendon obliterated umbilical artery from the umbilicus to the pelvis and this artery divides the inguinal triangle into medial half and the lateral half. The medial half supported by conjoint tendon and fascia transversalis, while the lateral half contain only the fascia transversalis. If we make cross section in this triangle like this, or this inguinal area as all, well, we will find the inguinal canal also. You remember, if you see the video of boundaries of inguinal canal, inguinal canal two, you will watch you will see like this you remember this is external oblique muscle external oblique aponeurosis and this is a superficial inguinal ring the beginning of arching fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominis the two fibers form the conjoint tendon and this is the reflected part of inguinal ligament and most of the we have this fascia transversalis and the deep inguinal ring. Of course, in male, this is spermatic cord through deep ring to superficial ring like this, and this is the early inguinal nerve. When we see this diagram, if we make a cut section here like this, we will also see this artery and this obliterated umbilical artery, inferior pigastric artery, medial to the deep ring. This is a deep inguinal ring, so this is an inferior pigastric artery here, you see here like this. And also, this is an obliterated umbilical artery behind like this. This is the area of inguinal triangle, you see. So the inferior pigastric artery, medial to the artery, this is an inguinal triangle, you see here. So this is the area of inguinal triangle, this is the floor of inguinal triangle formed by fascia transversalis and conjoint tendon, you can see in this diagram. We have two types of hernia, we have kind called indirect inguinal hernia that pass through, through deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring indirect okay and they have direct type so the indirect hernia through come through through the deep ring inguinal canal superficial ring we call this indirect or oblique we have here a spermatic cord so the indirect type but through spermatic cord Okay, because the cords start from the deep inguinal ring. Why the direct inguinal hernia? But through the inguinal triangle. So, if you see here, this is obliterated umbilical artery. If it comes through here or through here, through the medial, medial to the obliterated artery, this is called medial direct, or lateral to the artery is called lateral direct. At first, to understand the indirect hernia, I want you to watch this video, okay? this one yes we'll start again here like this <clears throat> we this simple diagram show that this is the abdominal cavity and this is a scrotum here and this is the inguinal canal we have this peritoneum here in this area testes developed in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peritoneum like this after this the testes descend to the scrotum if you watch here, this is send of testis like this. This is inguinal canal, deep inguinal ring, superficial inguinal ring, and scrotum. So, when testis reaches the deep inguinal ring here, the peritoneum gives a process like this, called the processus vaginalis. So, this is a process from the peritoneum come with testes to the scrotum like this. After this, the, this process come with testes into, with this, into the scrotum like this, you see. 
we call this processes varinalis connected with peritoneal cavity and the, the testis in the scrotum now after the testis completely descend into the scrotum this processes varinalis has distal part and proximal part the distal part remain patent open like this and form what is called tonica varinalis while the proximal part obliterated and we call this vestige of processes varinalis so you can see after this complete descent of testis like this so this is a vestige of processes varinalis and this is a tonica varinalis okay if these processes remain patent like this uh, you must understand that processes pass through inguinal canal okay this way the intestine is here so the intestine will come through this defect to the scrotum and we call this congenital inguinal hernia congenital indirect inguinal hernia you mean congenital indirect due to failure of obliteration of processes varinalis the vestige remain patent or process remain patent and the intestine come into the scrotum we call this congenital indirect inguinal hernia i will show you this also in this video you can see like this you see here again this is the intestine okay and this is a process of varinalis and tonica varinalis is the testis this is the inguinal canal you see here remember fascia transversalis uh, peritoneum parietal peritoneum here and this is a processus from peritoneum fascia transversalis and deep inguinal ring internal oblique transversus external oblique conjoint tendon reflected part the intestine pass through the non obliterated process of varinalis into the scrotum you see here this is a congenital indirect inguinal hernia you can see here again like this but through the process of varinalis like this again 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 see this kind of hernia of congenital type pass to the scrotum see like this this is a congenital indirect we can also find this kind of hernia may be stopped in the inguinal canal like this not come through the superficial ring they call this be a bono seal this is a kind of uh, indirect hernia the, so the intestine or hernia stop in the inguinal canal be a bono seal and if the hernia come through the superficial ring like this reach only the the neck of the scrotum here like here okay we call this funicular type of indirect inguinal hernia or completely descent into the scrotum we call this complete type of indirect inguinal hernia so in indirect type we have if, he is, if the hernia stop in the inguinal canal we call this be a bono seal if come out through the superficial inguinal ring and stop at neck of scrotum we call this funicular type if completely descent into the scrotum to the testis like this we call this complete indirect type so this is a congenital type why what is the cause of this congenital type i told you failure of fusion of processes varinalis you see here this is processes varinalis and this processes not uh, obliterated like here in this area okay so the intestine comes through this defect the congenital type okay what about the acquired type you can see also another video like this stop and the acquired type this is the intestine the process varinalis completely obliterated like this and this is the tonica varinalis okay the intestine push the parietal peritoneum here okay we call we and form what's called pulsion sac you see acquired pulsion sac you see here like this see the intestine so the intestine not come through the process of analysis here it come through the beside the process of in, within the contents of the spermatic cord you see here we call this kind of peritoneum here that post like this acquired pulsion sac you see also may stop in the inguinal canal be bonocil 
make your arm come out through superficial ring and stop at nickel scrotum we call this funicular tie or descent completely into the scrotum okay this called acquired indirect inguinal hernia so we have congenital indirect and acquired indirect okay well, the difference the acquired form special sac separate sac and separate sac inside this spermatic cord while the congenital type pass through the processes vaginalis the, the failed obliterated processes vaginalis okay what about the direct direct type of in of inguinal hernia okay so the direct type come through this area this is the floor of the inguinal triangle if you remember this i will show you again like this here <clears throat> in this video here okay if you remember this is a inguinal floor of inguinal triangle here conjoint tendon and fascia transversalis the medial part of inguinal triangle has fascia transversalis and conjoint tendon the lateral part of inguinal triangle fascia transversalis only this is the inferior pigastric artery this is the intestine we also remember they we have here obliterated umbilical artery in this part okay this is the intestine we if the intestine comes through the lateral part of inguinal triangle this is called lateral direct inguinal hernia if the intestine comes through the medial part of inguinal triangle we call this medial direct inguinal hernia this lateral type commonly due to old age you know the aging process because degeneration in this fascia you know become this area become weak and the muscles also become weak so the intestine comes through this triangle so this hernia type of hernia commonly bilateral i will i will show you now the course of the intestine forward you see here we'll push the proteinium and the fascia transversalis like this you see you understand the un indirect type inside the spermatic cord the direct type be behind the spermatic cord you see this is the area of spermatic cord inside the inguinal canal so the direct type here behind spermatic cord Yes, this is the area of spermatic cord is behind it. It is a vestigial, if you remember, one of the contents of the spermatic cord. So, this is the lateral direct inguinal hernia. The direction is forward. When we try to reduce this, or make a reduction for this, backward, like direct backward like this. Okay, so this is the lateral direct type of inguinal hernia. This can, so if you you see also this kind of hernia or this type of hernia cannot pass through the scrotum because not passing through the superficial ring this is away from superficial ring so the lateral type cannot pass through the scrotum okay if we see another video like this the medial type here what's the problem in medial type we you can ask me this is a medial have or medial part of inguinal triangle is supported by conjoint tendon so to for medial type to occur must be trouble in this conjoint tendon yes we have ilioinguinal nerve you remember this during appendectomy the ilioinguinal nerve may be cut you know so or injury of ilioinguinal nerve so the, there is a paralysis of this conjoint tendon and become weak so if you see here what will happen then the intestine will push the peritoneum and fascia transversalis and the conjoint tendon and afflicted part you can see what will happen here you see intestine this is a medial direct inguinal hernia push the peritoneum and conjoint tendon remember the conjoint tendon behind the superficial ring see see what will happen so this kind of hernia may pass through the superficial ring yes and may very rare is to pass into the scrotum you know because pass through superficial ring may pass to the scrotum but the lateral type never pass to the scrotum because away from the superficial inguinal ring so we make a rapid review about types of hernias this is the congenital indirect through process vaginalis remains the, the because due to failure of fusion of process of obliteration of process vaginalis this is the congenital indirect okay acquired indirect acquired partial sac through the inguinal canal either the congenital or acquired type are inside spermatic cord okay and also inside inguinal canal of course and there is a 
the lateral direct inguinal hernia through the lateral part of inguinal triangle here and this is the medial direct inguinal hernia push the parallel to conjoint tendon through superficial ring I hope you understand the types of inguinal hernia to understand this structure of inguinal canal also and the inguinal triangle you can refer to the previous three videos inguinal canal 1 introduction inguinal canal 2 boundaries and inguinal triangle this is very important for you to understand the anatomy of the inguinal region okay thank you for watching this video